This video is on the internal motor tear apart on the P825 Polaris. It also goes to the Zodiac WR000021. Now, I believe they are identical machines. One's blue, one's white. Maybe some other models in there, but I bought this a while back, ended up getting a couple of them. Got one for parts, and I couldn't get this thing to work, and I've got some strange issues with it. But everybody shows how to pull these things apart, which is, you can pull that anywhere. They're pretty self-explanatory. Once you start, it's good to see a video to see how everything comes apart. They, they, they're really quick to do. But there was nothing really detailed on the motor, and I saw some done it where you had to put all kind of gook and sealant around them and all that. Well, that's not how these work. And I'll post my question at the end of what I was having, and maybe somebody will will know. But as you know, this, this comes together. I'll just use these two pieces here. They come together. When you pull this part out, they look basically like this. They're, they're a case. Um, it comes case. And once you pull this top cover off um, with all the screws, then it just pops right off. Well, let me let me say something here real quick that I think is really, really nice. I don't know if it was an engineer's design or for the people that they thought were going to install them or what have you. But anyway, there's only three size screws on this whole machine. This tiny one here is the one that holds the circuit board in one the two longer ones is what holds this base right here and right here to the housing there's two of these one of these and this size screw which is the majority does everything else in the whole machine period so don't lose this one don't lose that one don't lose any of these I keep them all separated. I, I don't have to keep these separated because I know there's only two big ones and that one tiny little one where they go. But that's one thing nice about this. On some things that you pull apart, there's got to be 15 different size screws. Where in this, it's pretty simple. Anyway, what happens is I couldn't tell what was wrong with this, so I pulled the, the whole machine apart. It came that I found that the wires were broke at the connection going into the machine were broke inside the machine I guess from pulling it up all the time uh, so I started with that I completely rewired that and what I used was I used this wiring I don't know if you can see it 16 aug I'm gonna go real slow so you can see it it's sun and water resistant 300 volt I'll go real slow so you can get all the numbers if you want to try to find it or get it. Um, but what I liked about this is, I'm getting too far away now. I'll go again real slow. So if you got to get any numbers to try to find this stuff, you can. Sorry about taking so long, but if you read and write as slow as I do, you'll see. So anyway, what's nice about this is aircraft or boat wiring is what I was told when I got it. But inside the, the wiring here, you have your wires. You have a black, a green, and a white. But what you also have are these three pieces of rubber that follow the whole length. And that makes this stuff super bendable without breaking anything. It's really good. I repair Ego mowers too, and especially the start, the um, control that makes you go faster or slower, speed control, and I use this wire, and it's never failed me. I run that the length of the mower, and it's great stuff. Um, you may be able to find that where it is, but what I did was I, I went to the main control, the main board here, and I took the plug. I ran the wires down into the plug here, this is what came out of it. This is an old plug that came out of another unit. And this piece, when you unscrew this, you just have your typical compression sleeve in here. Stuff doing everything with one hand. When they all 
get smart and get a, but it's got a compression sleeve. This little white piece pops out. Slide that over it, which is really tough. Um, and then it goes into here and then into your clips, which these are your clips if you want to try to pre-find them. These are what come out of it. And they got the two springs on each side. So if you've got a clip tool that fits around this one, it'll compress those two clips out and these come right out. Otherwise, you got to dig in there and try to find them and push that in and push this side in and just bend them in and this will slip out. But that's the type there are that are inside this pin, which are inside here. And these were in pretty bad shape, as you can see. This one was completely gone. Okay, I know this is kind of making it tough, but you get a little bit of an insight of what you're doing. But this pushes out this away, so you can put new clips in there and new wires. Uh, also, heat shrink from here, which I took these out and put those in there, and I put heat shrink tubing all the way around it, and all the way up, all the way up to the beginning. And this is half inch, one half inch shrink tubing to go around the main wire also hold on just a second let me find it i basically use these two lubes for electrical and this one i use for the old rings and everything because there's a few old rings in there and this one this one you may not be able to find but this one right here it's what I use for electrical, for all the electrical connections going underwater, and then your, all your O-rings. So those are good to have on hand. Uh, again, this wiring, if you can find this stuff, is good. Just about anything will work, though. Just make sure when you buy heat shrink, don't do what I do and go buy the cheap stuff you can find. Find some good stuff because as you're heating it up, it will melt, it will break, it will cut, and everything else. And the shrink is just not that good. That's what she said anyway. So anyway, when you get to this part here, turn it around so you can see some sunshine. It says Florida. This clip right here, when it goes in, it's got these three pins over here. These pins on this box are good, so it's great. These pins were good on this circuit board. So this pin here, it's got a little notch right here. It tells you which way it goes. You just take that in there. And I put some sealing on there already, but this one goes in there, pushes down like that, and that's good. And then, after you open the box up, there's your circuit board, nothing to really look at on there. You have your main motor here for your impeller. That goes up to the top of here, which I've already removed. It just pulls straight off. And it goes, when the circuit board's in this one, it goes closest to the front up here. The second wiring goes to your motor for your wheels. Now, here's the deal. This is a one and an eighth inch nut. On the inside of this motor here, there's an O-ring. And there's another O-ring on this side. I don't know the torque, but I put the torque on it where I felt like I was good and strong uh, as far as compressing the O-rings, because that's gonna stop your leakage right there. Then also, this one is the difficult one. There's two nuts in here. This is a one and one quarter inch nut. You can you do not have to cut this ring off because that's part of your wheels. Your wheels fit into a slot. You don't want to really move that very much. But this is a one and a quarter inch socket. Now, you need a cheaper or a thin walled socket. Do not get a big thick wall socket. I have a Craftsman, it would not fit. Husky makes one that will fit. It's a black Husky and it's a thin wall one and a quarter. Put it on this first nut, it comes right off. You got another nut underneath there, it comes right off and this motor will come out. This motor will come right out. For whatever reasons you have to take it out, I don't know. I took it out, there's an O-ring on the inside. I just, the O-rings were in good shape. I put an O-ring on there. 
Also took an ohm meter, put it on both these wires. I turned the motor, the ohm meter went crazy on both of these, so that tells me the motor, the bushings, the bear, I mean, the, the bushings and everything is okay. So I checked this motor out like that. I did not hook it up to any voltage as far as to try to spin it, which I can do also, but like I tested it, every motor I've ever tested, that's how they work out. So this one goes to the bottom side. This one goes to the top side. It's kind of hard to say what the top side and bottom side is, but that's the screw side we'll call the top side. So the main motor for the impeller goes on the top one. Now, real important when you take this thing apart, very, very important, there is a pin that goes in here. Take that pin out. Take it out, put it in your container. If you don't, you lose that pin. And I don't know what you're gonna say or do, but don't lose that pin. So after that, I, I, I greased this uh, O-ring back. I just stuck the motor back in there. O-ring on this side, O-ring on this side. Put that back, one and a quarter inch. Husky, thin wall, works fine. If you can find just one, go to pawn shops, wherever. If you don't have one that fit, none of my sockets fit in there, but I did go to a pawn shop to buy one. He went in the back, got one, it worked. Thin wall will work. Putting it back together. I'm not going to do all that for you. Make sure this packet is still in there. If you have a new one somewhere or you just get a new one, put it in there. I actually have another one that I put together and I put a bunch of little bitty packets in there. It never can be too dry. This screws right back on here. Um, then when you put your top back on, there's some things you need to real important also is there is a gasket in here you got to be real careful don't do as i do sometimes it's not real right but i just kind of push that in there and squeeze it i don't try to poke it there is a there is a gasket that runs on the inside all the way around take that out clean it real well put your put your sealant on there put it back in there make sure it's really clean all the way around and then that way when you put this back together it should not leak now there's a little white tab. You notice that somebody took this one apart before they took that off. It's not there. Make sure that's back on there. And this goes over the motor, over the motor. So once you screw this back in, I'm not gonna do it all. Then you put your top back on there. Make sure that's over the motor. That goes right back in there. And then I do the old one screw here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And then I just cross and I just go back and forth and I torque them out. Now I use, I do lazy man's version. I put it on number four and I just go with a number four. And sometimes I'll start with a number two to tighten them all down. And then I'll go with a number four and go, and then I go all the way around and make sure they're all seated. Here's my question. Okay, and then you go ahead and you mount this all the way back. It's real simple, goes right back in there the same way same way you did it okay uh, my my que my question is I haven't put this motor system in there yet but the one that I rebuilt in that machine what happens is if I have it on the side of the pool I turn it on it starts up it'll start twirling and also the wheels will roll for for about one second two seconds which i figure that's a time limit now the way you test them also is you can when you get the com unit complete which i'm going to do to this one i'm just going to take another control box and wiring i'm going to take that and hook it into this box and the way i do that is i just take the box and turn just the box itself no machine not hooked up everything i turn this upside down and it'll run when it runs i'm in good shape so i thought machines together running upside down the motor put it all together go out to the pool put it in the water turn it on half a second it turns up blows water out the top i had it on my steps underwater the complete unit underwater blew blew the water out the top so then it wouldn't do anything i got my three flashes three flashes three flashes i took it out Put it on the side of the pool, turn it on, 
and it started running. Only about two seconds. Put it back in the water, nothing. Out of the water, it runs. In the water, nothing. What the heck is that? Also, where is the float switch in this to tell this machine, unless this is it right here, I don't see anything in here that can tell me it's a float system or a, a, a mercury switch unless it's in this right here. Um, what kind of a switch tells this machine if it's up or down or what tells this machine that it's in the water? Because that's a com the wiring system is completely sealed and of course this never touches the water. So if anybody's got the answers to that, I'll appreciate that. I have not tried this one to see if it works. I just got through putting it back together. Like I said, I took this from two different machines and uh, two motor packs and I put it all together and that one I rebuilt from scratch up. I did not pull the motors apart because like I said, they tested out, but something is wrong somewhere. So this is another whole system that's gonna go in that machine or I'll just build a blue one and do it. So any questions, let me know. Uh, again, <laughs> this is the system for this, which you can find these pins anywhere. Like I said, they're little small pins, round open, but you need the tool that'll compress both of these. I worked with a pick and I finally got them. In fact, that's the pick I used. Um, and I just compressed them and I had to figure out which one it was. So hopefully this will tell you which one it is. And then that goes like that. And again, the wiring, if you can find this wiring anywhere, great stuff make sure you put your your sealants and your gasket material you do not need to put gook all over this thing you do not need to use any sealant the only sealant you're going to use is this one it's all o-rings in there if they're good and fresh if not order your new o-rings uh, but i've seen where people put silicone and all kinds of uh, gasket material and everything on this and if you do that just throw the damn thing away you go buy you another case and restart okay any questions, comments, if you got an answer to why this thing and how this thing works when it's upside down or in the water and how it knows, let me know. And if you got any suggestions, it would make this thing run longer. I do have two control boards. They do the same thing. So hopefully somebody will know the answers to that. This is Tugboat. I'm signing off. Y'all have a great, wonderful day. And uh, thanks for any comments.